Hey guys, um, I thought I said that I would do a video on my uh, three and three quarter stuff, and I finally broke out all my three and three quarter stuff. It's not all on the table, but this is all the stuff that I use along with it. Pretty much, uh, this giant diorama I use with it. I use it for uh, um, uh, photographing purposes only. It's too flimsy to play with, you know. Like I'll set guys on it, but I won't like like mess around or do any like slamming uh figures uh onto it or anything like that you know not that i'm really of appropriate age to be doing that with my figures but i'm just saying that this isn't really for playing with this is meant for um uh photographing and it's and it's actually a really cool uh um device to use that with um you can basically take in like different sections different rooms and all that and uh really get some good environmental uh pictures alongside with it it seems like three and three quarter is a hard um uh scale uh to actually take pictures with what i'm noticing because i'm playing around with it a, a lot um as of recent um so what kind of rekindled my interest with uh three and three quarter was um uh actually uh uh joy toys uh warhammer 40k figures these things are amazing um so i bought these uh joy toy uh warhammer 40k figures about a, about a week ago and uh i've been slowly but surely opening them up um they can uh these guys over here these kind of uh uh standard uh 40k looking dudes uh they came into a pack of four for like 150 dollars and i know that that's a lot but uh i tend to pay up for toys it's just how i am um and this uh mech this giant um war suit as they call it um invictor war suit is what it's called um uh that cost me like 200 dollars and uh Looking at it now, I'm surprised it didn't cost more. This is easily like a $300 uh, uh, vehicle. Um, it's pretty much in the same realm as this, my uh, APC, which ended up costing me um, a little over $300. So it, this is definitely, definitely uh, worth your money. Um, I highly advise getting this. The reason why I got extra guys was because let's say I get these and, um, I just, I, I just want to have these. Um, I would rather have a small collection of, uh, of, of Warhammer 40k three and three quarter figures than to just have one mech with one Warhammer guy. Um, and this is a specialized Warhammer guy inside there. They call these the infiltrators. They're, um, heavily armored as far as like, as far as like, uh, troops, troops go but they're not as hev heavily armored as these guys these guys are just heavy heavy armor so but these are like heavy armor but they're they're not as as heavily armored so that they can fit into vehicles and probably so they can move faster too and stuff like that these guys are more like on the front lines you know just there um nothing can stop them you know which is probably why they live a lot, you know, so, but, uh, I just wanted to do this overview on Warhammer 40k in three and three quarter. I honestly think that it's the best, um, three and three quarter idea that anyone has ever had. Um, honestly, it's not really something that we've been asking for, um, cause Warhammer 40k guys, they have their miniatures and stuff like that. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll even, uh, pull out some miniatures that I, that I've done over the past. I never played Warhammer 40k. I got kind of into it cause I was very into the aesthetic. It's like, uh, it's kind of like, how can you not be when they have like monsters and, uh, you know, guys in power armor and, you know, heavy weapons and, uh, heavy machinery and stuff like that. It's really hard you know, as, as, as me, and you find out about this thing, and then, um, and then, uh, not to get into that, so, uh, the thing that really kind of turned me off, though, um, and you're probably going to hear this a lot from Warhammer, from, from, like, people that 
actually play Warhammer on a daily basis. But the thing that really, uh, really uh, turned me off was just that, like, I went down to a local hobby store, and um, uh, I wanted to learn how to play the game, but uh, the way I learn is I learn better through watching uh, people uh, rather than uh, reading a book, you know? Um, uh, so I go, I walk down there cause it wasn't too far from my house and then, uh, um, I go in there and then like, it just seemed like all the people, like all the people there who were playing it that day were very standoffish. Like, like they really didn't like the fact that I was a newcomer into the hobby and, and that I wanted to learn how to play. They were just, they were very like cut off. They didn't really explain anything. So, um, so that's why that in, in some ways, that's sort of what turned me off to, to Warhammer, but I always loved the, um, aesthetic of it. And what's, what's awesome about these is that these, <clears throat> these are very, these are very, uh, these are very, um, high quality these are insanely high quality and um uh you know they're toys at the same time like you can actually play with these things like they're durable enough to where you could probably slam them together like you can with he-man figures you could probably drop them you know and they're not gonna break um i wouldn't i wouldn't say so much about this um because this has pretty rigid plastic on it to uh simulate uh to simulate uh, armor. So if this thing were to take a shelf dive, this thing might be compromised. But the figures themselves um, are uh, very, very, very high, high, uh, highly uh, um, detailed and also very high quality is what I meant to say. Um, I'm just in awe of these figures. I'm really fighting back on trying not to get more three and three quarter stuff. And I'm also trying to fight back and not getting more, uh, more of these space Marines. I definitely want them to come out with more vehicles. Um, and, uh, uh, there's like tons of more vehicles that they could, they could choose from. I mean, it's insane. Uh, uh, here I could even show you. Stuff like this. Um, I think they're coming out with something like this. Not this exact uh, model, but they are coming out with something like that. Where they have it where, like, the uh, the pilot is more um, infused with the mech. Um, but uh, I would really like to see... Uh, um, if I can find it. Yeah, I would really like to see stuff like this. These uh, speeders. Um, I always thought the design on these were just so cool. stuff like that like we haven't gotten like we haven't gotten like a good like three and three quarter um uh uh air aircraft vehicle in a while like um the only good one i can think of is probably um probably this thing and this is from lenard so i mean it's kind of messed up that like gi joe and uh um and, uh, um, and, uh, stuff haven't really given us that. Acid rain hasn't really given us that. I guess you could say that the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, the Star Wars stuff is aircraft, but I don't know if, um, I don't know if, uh, space, space vehicles are technically aircraft. So... a lot of content in here but yeah and one of these tanks i would love to get too <clears throat> on hand here's some here's several uh warhammer models that i've actually made before um i never when i paint these things since i'm doing it based on my own aesthetic i never go based off of what the instructions tell me to paint them as so i always paint them like my own version of doing so so um 
like I made that guy entirely chrome. Um, I did this one where I gave it more of like a, uh, more of like a desert sand type of, uh, um, paint job. Uh, not camouflage, but like, I mean, you get what I'm saying. Uh, this thing. <clears throat> Tried to make it a little articulated as well, so, um, didn't paint the guy. I just, uh, um, I thought it would be, be too much. Um, a lot of these, um, and these aren't even my good ones, but a lot of these, when I would paint them, uh, it would take me about a week. And that's if I really buckled down and, and, uh, and, uh, painted them. So if I worked hard on them for like a week, then that's how, that's how long it would take me to actually finish up. So, um, there's that. And then, like, I would even take shortcuts here, too. Like, uh, like for example, this one, I would, I would paint in just one color. And then, um, uh, and then I would just go in and add the details. But a lot of times, I would also try really hard and actually putting effort into them. Uh, sorry for that. The fucking teapot's going off. Anyway, sorry about that, uh, noise, guys. Um, so, yeah, uh... We got those. Um, the cool thing about these, though, and this is just what kind of blows my mind, is that you could actually game with these. Um, from what I heard, see, and I don't know much about 40K or the rules or really how it's played. Um, I got, like, I have, like, uh, um, bits and pieces of information, but I'm not in any way, shape, or form an expert. But from what I've heard, you could play, like, Kill Team with these. And that's definitely something that I would like to maybe do. Um, you know, I got this I could use as, like, parts of the terrain. Um, since, you know, you're not slamming them together on the terrain, so. So, yeah. Some Acid Rain figure. I love Acid Rain. Um, I, uh, I'm kind of fighting myself to not buy those as well right now. But it's it's hard because they have so much cool stuff that I still haven't bought. So uh, you can see I made this little vehicle here. Um, this transforms out into a mech, which is really cool. And then um, I got like the armor barricades, um, having like a having like this makeshift armor on the uh, on the trailer that it's pulling, and it's got. Um, like graffiti and stuff on it. It's really, really cool. The one thing about uh, three and three quarters that I don't really like too much is that it almost kind of gets boring to collect because there's only so much that guys can do with it. Um, uh, there's like, uh, you know, you can't make very detailed figures out of it, um, you know, and uh, and there's just there's just so much you can't like there's so much that's honestly hard to do so um so uh yeah let me kind of compare these with the uh, mcfarlane figures and then um i'm gonna call it a day okay i actually have one in package um i bought one in package because uh i didn't think that mcfarlane was gonna go through with this line i thought it was just gonna be a one-off and um uh, and since that happened, I kind of wanted to keep like a memento, um, because there was a part in my life when I really did work hard on these things. And, uh, I was kind of going through like a weird part in my life. And, um, it's just, uh, it's, I, I, I thought it was cool that somebody was actually making toys of these, like legit toys, you know, and not making like, you know, just miniatures or just, you know, like, Funko Pops or anything like that, so, um, uh, and it, it was a lot of fun just making these things, um, I've kind of grown out of it for now, just because, uh, um, like, well, for one, the, the hobby store that I would go to to get the models and the paint, um, was really kind of a pain in the ass to go to, and, uh, the guy was just not friendly at all, and it was just not fun to go there, so, in, in, in that sense, I guess that's sort of what what killed me for or what killed the hobby for me 
but um aside from that it was it was a lot of fun just painting them and painting them and painting them and doing that stuff and then just getting it done it was so much fun just to do that and just to work on it so um but yeah and uh, i think if i'm not mistaken this um this particular uh version is supposed to be this guy there are certain things that this version has that this guy doesn't have for example the shields on the on the on a different side of the pauldron um and the shield instead of having a uh um a uh, molded in skull it's just a painted um thing um so i don't know if exactly this is the right guy but the uh the kneecap paint over here is almost the same and uh um this guy doesn't have the um the insignia on his uh jetpack or jump pack i think they're just jump packs um uh they would be like too overpowered if it was a jetpack but uh um but uh yeah so there's that and then um uh he doesn't have a communicator this guy actually has a communicator so um I can, yeah, and isn't that cool, like, like, look at how they, look at how they, uh, did the, um, look at how, the, how, uh, Joy Toy did the, uh, communicator in his, uh, in there, like, it just looks classic 90s, I know people throw that term around, classic 90s, but there's something about, like, futuristic technology that also looks like it's sort of outdated, you know? So, uh, yeah, and he has like the, uh, the um, molded on skulls on his pauldrons. This guy doesn't. Um, I do have an example that's opened and in my collection, but uh, he's like on there and I just thought it was easier to grab the packaged one, so. But it's a good thing that McFarland's making these um, I definitely want to see him do more, um, I, I definitely want to see him do, like, more unique characters, because you can't, like, these are too big to really, to really game with, these are, like, the perfect size, you know, and they're so fucking huge, like, like, they just are, like, okay, like, you, you have, you can see in there, there's, like, there's, like, several down there, and you can see Apocalypse, now Apocalypse bigger than them, but not by much, and you can see, like, if you can see a comparison between, uh, the one up there, and then, uh, the, uh, Acid Rain figure, he dwarfs, he dwarfs her easily, so, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely revisit this, uh, this, uh, line and talk more about it later on as time goes on. Um, anyways, uh, take care and, uh, just keep collecting, you know, um, bye.